spirits are entering into your heart, they're becoming actually the very blood of your life. Now, when they talk about the inner sunnah and the outer sunnah, especially in the beloved, in the way of the Naqshbandiya, they talk about the lataif. Any Naqshbandis out here? Because I know it's a Naqshbandi uh, thing. Any Naqshbandis? One, two, some, alhamdulillah, three. In the teaching of the Naqshbandiya, as in the other Tariqa, there is a science of centers inside of the human body that are called the lataif. Anybody's heard of the lataif? These things are like, you know the men who do this all the time? And they pray weights like this all the time? What do they get? What do they get? Big muscles. They become mighty men like this. How do they get this? By exercise. The inside of the human being is filled with centers. The center of the solar plexus, the center of the heart. Ah, can I hear it from you? Ah. Allah, can I hear Allah, <clears throat> Allah, is there Allah, can I hear it? Allah, ah, ah, let me hear, ah, ar-Rahman, ah, this is the sound of the heart, ah, 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 that's the sound of the heart, ooh, ooh, ya wadu. What's this? The sound of the throat. Rahim. Yee. Oh, hi. Hoo. Ha. Hi. Hoo. Ha. What are they doing by this? They are working the centers just like the weightlifters are weightlifting like this or working out with their bodies to do certain things like this. The person who reads the Quran is working the, the, the inner. Uh, organs of their human body and transforming the inner self into the Quranic uh, auditorium of your being. You understand what I'm saying? This is the process. This is what we're talking about. This is, we want this practice in daily life. If you read, I'm, I know I'm, I have two minutes left, three minutes left, I'm not going to take it longer. You understand what I'm talking about. The way to do it, find a teacher. Find a, a Mukri Sheikh, a Qari, a submit to this Qari, learn to read. You're not going to read like him. Remember the man who came up here to read like that? I've been reading for many years. I read two, three hours a day. I'll never, I'm not an opera star. I'm not Parvati. I'm just, you understand? So you're not going to maybe, here I have him, Hafiz. If I have Hafiz stand up here, he will read, he can read short, he can read long, he can read fast, he can read slow, he can make Abu Basit for you, he can make Khusri for you, he can make Manshawi for you, anyway, what you want. We're not going to attain that. That's not what we're looking for, to become an opera star. Indeed, the Rasulullah said, beware of the parrots, the ones who sing like parrots. But what we want to do is to internalize the revelation of the Quran, the sound of it inside of our own beings. And that's, wh that's what we're talking about in this. This is a way to change your life by a very simple thing which Allah has already ordered you to in the very first place, Ikra. Is this clear? Is it clear? That's the point. So you have to ask yourselves, ladies, sisters, gentlemen, brothers, just like with your salat, you, you, you got your salat established, step one. Okay, you have to establish this in your life. If you're not reading everyday Quran, you know, the people who keep Quran, when, when somebody dies, they suddenly they take out the Quran and they read Yasin. Oh, somebody's dying, it's time to read Yasin. Well, I bet you should read Yasin every day. It's the people when they die, they take the Mus'haf, and or well, somebody's very sick, they blow the pages of the Mus'haf on them. No, no, but this is a kind of worship, a kind of shirk, a strange kind of shirk. This has to be put to work. And the only way to put it to work is by reading it every day. So ask yourselves how much time do you give? You got 24 hours a day, you got to work for your family, provide for your family, you have extra time. You're watching the Olympics, you're watching Millionaire, you're watching this, you're watching that, you're watching it, you're wasting time. Unless you're doing this every day. You check yourself, you know what he says? Check your own nafs, check yourselves. You know what you're doing with your time. If you're not spending time with the Quran, you're not spending the time where you can get knowledge from. The TV doesn't have knowledge by itself. 
Right. Put your time in the Quran. Give that Quran some time every day. If you give it five minutes, increase it to 10 minutes. If you give it 10 minutes, increase it to 20 minutes. If you give it 20 minutes, increase it to 30 minutes. If you got 30 minutes down, read in the morning, read at the night, until this begins to move you, until you begin to fill with this Quran is moving you, you think, you look, you see, everything is from those eyes. That's all I have to say. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Stuff for Allah, if anything I said was wrong, I hope that something you got that was something beneficial. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah. Beautiful uh, presentation about Quran and beautiful advice that all we follow to read the Quran every day, alhamdulillah. Uh, one announcement is that uh, Dr. Jafar Naqshbandi has lost his shoes, and if somebody by mistake, uh, sometimes they can be exchanged. So we contact us, please. And then also, you look into your belongings, and if you have somebody lost anything uh, valuable, please look and uh, check with us, and. Uh, uh, contact the uh, either Nashmandia Foundation booth or contact uh, Mr. Biabani and myself uh, if you lost anything valuable. Now, <clears throat> it's my pleasure and honor to introduce Dr. Abdul Hakim Murad again to you. Uh, he really comes all the way from England uh, to participate. And this is the third time. and. Uh, in the International Milad and Nabi Conference. And it's a great honor because it's not easy to travel all the way to come to this conference, but I'm very honored and privileged to introduce to you. And also he has agreed to, again, give a second talk uh, despite the travel he had. We'd love to hear from him uh, the aspects of prophetic uh, excellence, uh, Dr. Abdul Kimura. Thank you. <coughs> Bismillah rahman rahim Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala. Very grateful for those uh, allusions to my excursion across the Atlantic yesterday. Actually, it's uh, no sacrifice at all. As uh, Imam Ibn al farid said, Imam Ibn al farid says, Lawla shadaha mahtadaytu lihaniha. But for the fragrance of the wine, I would not have found my way to the tavern. It's always a, a privilege and a great honor to, to come to this gathering. Um, I suppose what I'm going to try and do is to add a few reflections, some of them fairly extended, hopefully not too extended. I take it that I have about half an hour to what I was trying to get at earlier today. And uh, dangle before you the suggestion that if we are not just to plod on as we are at present in our Western diaspora, but to be heard, which is our religious duty, we have to consider the fact that at present we have lamentably failed. And we have failed quite simply and obviously because we are not tuned in to the frequency of the Western ear. 